Hey guys, welcome back. So welcome to the episode number four of Spring Core Framework tutorial series. So in the earlier videos, we understood about loose coupling and we understood that Spring supports loose coupling. And in the last video, we understood that Spring supports dependency injection, which is one of the most important feature of Spring framework, right? So two of the most important feature, if you talk about Spring IOC, then we can say it's help us to do the dependency injection and in the same time it help us to achieve loose coupling. So in this video, this video is going to be a little special. Why? Because we are going to learn how to use Spring in an enterprise level application. So the loose coupling and the dependency injection. I'm going to pull everything together in this video and going to create a simple little funny kind of app and uh, that will make you feel better and you will understand that okay this is how we can achieve loose coupling in spring okay and we will we'll understand okay how to do that right and yes before we go ahead with this tutorial there is one more thing that i want to say you stay tuned with me till the video end right because i am going to give you a simple assignment right that you are going to do that and you are going to send that to me right and once you are done with that we can go ahead with some advanced level concept like auto wearing and all the stuffs, right? But this video is going to be really, really important. Whatever that we are understanding from the last four videos, we are going to wrap everything within this single video and, uh, you know, we'll see, okay, how it works. So as usual, I have created a very simple project here called Spring Loose Coupling, okay? And I have done some basic thing over here so that I will not waste your time, all right? So if I go into this project, you can see I do have a folder called SRC. I have created a package here called com.seleniumexpress.di and I do have few classes and I do have a bin.xml file. Okay, so before you worry about this classes and bin.xml file, I just want to tell you these are the same classes right this is these are the same files that we have developed in the last video which is a dependency injection object type this project we have created in the last video right so these are some basic classes that i do have so now let me uh, give you a recap that what we did in the last video so that if anybody is watching this video for the first time then he also can follow this okay so what i can do right now i'm going to create sorry i'm going to open this class called student.java and let me maximize this class and i'm going to zoom it a little there you go all right so this is the same class that we have created in the last video right so we have a class called student let's say this student is me i am a dull student i don't study so i depend on cheating so this student is me and i do have a dependency my dependency is uh you know I depend on match it okay so tomorrow is my exam and uh, you know I just want to do the cheating and tomorrow I have the math exam so I have created a math cheat class over here so if I open this match cheat class so you can see there is a class called match cheat and this particular class right now does have a method called match cheat so this particular match it method does nothing. I mean, I just log something over here called match cheating started. A simple sys out which prints match cheating started. That's it. Math class, it has a method called match it. Simple, that's it, right? So now coming back to the student class. So here what I did, I just add a simple, you know, dependency here called match it. And this particular match it object, I am, in, I am just injecting this particular match it object by using a setter injection, right? And now let's talk about this particular method called cheating. And this cheating method does what? It's just called the match cheat method of match cheat class. So you can see I'm using the match cheat reference and using the math, uh, math cheat reference, I'm calling the math cheat uh, class method, which is match cheat, as simple as that, right? So in my student class, I have a dependency called match cheat. This is the one thing I want you to remember because I'm going to modify it so much as we go progress with this tutorial, right? So how many dependencies that we have inside the class? One dependency. What is the dependency name? My dependency name is match it. Simple. 
and what kind of injection that I'm doing over here setter or constructor it is a setter injection right and that's it so right now let's open the bin start XML file and let's see how I have configured these things right okay so now if you'll see this bin configuration then can you tell me how many objects that I do need to configure over here inside this bean and bean so if you see in the student class then first I need to create the object for student and also I need to create the object for match it so there are two different classes there are two different objects that we are dealing with over here in the student class the first class that we're dealing with is called student class then we do have also a inner bean present over here called match it okay clear right so we are configuring it inside the bins.xml file. So first of all, we are creating the student class object. So here you can see I have given it an ID called STU and this is the class name student. And then this particular student has a property called match it. So this is the property that I'm configuring it over here inside this bean and bean. And this property is not a normal property. This is a class property, right? This is a reference type. So I've given it a name and i'm also giving it a reference that hey math cheat object value this is actually the actual object that you need to reference to so if you don't understand this watch my last video so this is the thing that i have discussed in the last video right so i don't want to you know explore more with this because these things we have already discussed and i don't want to bore you guys so this is the quick recap from the last video so right. i think right now the things looks very simple to you because if you have already following me for the last four videos this will be very very simple thing for you but okay so i'm just asking you one question i know you can answer it uh, why i have written it property over here i know you have already answered me you said hey avilash don't bore me i already know you, you told me so many times that i do have a setter method over here and i want to do the injection by using the setter method that's why I have written it property because I want to do a setter injection. So as simple as that and that's it, right? So make sure that you understand these things, right? Before you go ahead. So this is nothing, right? I am just creating the math cheat object over here because my student class need a math cheat object. As my student class is dependent on a math cheat object, right? So here I have created a, another bean. I have created a, another object over here and the object id is math sheet object value and this particular object value i'm just putting it over here inside this wrap attribute because the reason why i'm putting it over here i've already told you in the last video i don't want to repeat it again right so math sheet is the dependency and this is the ref to uh, this particular object uh, you know which i have configured it over here so as simple as that Right now I can go ahead all good okay so let's go ahead so right now okay now now let's the show begin okay so now let's say so I I had my math exam already so I have written my math exam I have done the cheating this particular method works fine for me I just went to exam I just turned on this particular method I just call this particular method this particular method done the whole cheating for me right okay that's done but tomorrow uh, let's say day after tomorrow again I do have a science exam and I'm a dull student right I don't I don't study so I don't know science also so if I don't know science also then again I do need to do the cheating right so if I need to do the cheating again then I need to create a class for science sheet okay so let's create a class here called science sheet again so because I'm done with the math sheet right now I do have a science exam science sheet and uh, let's do a finish over here and there you go all right so we have successfully created our science sheet class right so right now we're going to create a method and uh, this particular method is specific to science sheet and i'll write public void uh, science uh, sheet and there you go all right okay so there you go so I do have the science sheet class ready right now in my science sheet class I do have a very simple method called science sheet and this particular science sheet method actually going to uh, do the cheating job for me okay so if I come back to the student uh, Java file now instead of the math sheet object I want to deal with the science sheet class right now I just want to do the science cheating right now so how can I do it 
So here in the math sheet class, uh, we want to call this particular math sheet method. That's why we have created the object or the reference over here for the math sheet. But right now, I don't want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do the science setting. So how can I call this particular method? Now I know you already guessed it. So you are going to say that, okay, Avila, so right now I'm going to remove this. I'm going to remove the line number five over here and I'm going to change the math sheet to science sheet, right? So you are going to do something like this, right? Something like private science sheet and uh, let's say science sheet and there you go. And you are going to remove this, right? You are going to tell that, but wait, that is a task for you. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to let you do that. So my requirement is I am not going to touch this class, right? This class coding has done. I'm not going to touch this. So this particular class need to support uh, for the math sheet, for the science sheet. Tomorrow, let's say day after tomorrow, again, I'll have the history exam. It should support the history sheet as well. So how this particular variable is going to support all kind of chip. Now that's what you are going to answer to me. It's very simple guys. Think like right now this particular variable, this is math sheet variable, right? So this variable is of what type? Math sheet type. So variables are just like pockets, right? Just like a pocket in the shot. Let's think like, okay, I do have the math exam yesterday, right? So this is my shot. I do have a pocket here. In that pocket, I have taken the math sheet, but wait, my exam is done. Right now, I want to take the science sheet. So in this pocket, right now, if I'm putting the science sheet, it is not going to support it. So how does it feel? So just to carry the science sheet, do I need to create, do I need to, you know, uh, go and purchase a new shot because I want a new pocket here? Just like that. This particular variable, right now only going to support the math sheet object. It is not going to support the science state object. Can I do equal to new science state? It's impossible, right? It is going to give you compilation error, right? Because it is only going to support match it object, right? Simple, it's, it's not going to give giving any compilation error because this match it of match it type, that's valid, right? We know about the object creation. So what I need to do so that my pocket is going to support every kind of cheat. I can, I can uh, uh, fit a math sheet into my pocket. I can fit a science sheet into my pocket. You understand what I want to say? So my variable need to support, you know, any kind of implementation, right? So what I can do? You need to guess it and you have guessed it right. I need to take the help of interface, right? Because directly if I'm putting the implementation class reference over here, it is not going to work for all the implementation, right? So we need to think for a solution and the solution is take the interface variable, right? Use the interface variable over here and any kind of implementation you want, you can, you can add that particular object to this particular reference, right? Now we're going to see how to do that right now, okay? Okay, so before we go to all those stuffs and mess mess with all those stuffs, first I want to do do a basic thing over here. I just want to see that you guys are on the track right now and you guys can follow whatever I'm saying. So you just need to make me believe that you are on the track. So first of all, can you do me a small favor? I'm just removing this line number five over here, okay? So first of all, let's think simple. So I am also removing this setter method over here. So I want to inject this uh, science sheet object over here inside the student class so that I can use this science sheet method. So how can I do it? It's very simple, right? So before we go for those interface and all those stuffs, let's do it first. Let's simply call this particular method, okay, into this particular student or Java class. Let's see, we are able to do that thing first or not, okay? So how to call this particular method over here? To call this particular method, we need the object of science sheet. So what I'm going to do over here is, um, first of all, I need to create a private variable and uh, science sheet is my class name, science sheet, and I'll write sheet, and uh, there you go.
if I want to use the science state class, I need to remove that older variable that I used to had for match it. I need I need to have a different setter method. I had to remove the previous setter method that I had. And again, in this particular method also, I, I just need to make changes because right now it is giving me an error because this is the old reference that we had. So right now we need to update it to the new reference and we need to call the, you know what, our science state method. So what is the method name of our science state? Science state, right? So I'm going to do science state. There you go. I'm done. So I'm going to do con control A and control shift F to resize my code and I'll do control S. So there you go. So can you see the problem here? So just for uh, a new implementation to my student class, a new thing I want to implement or, or a new thing I want to get in my student class, I need to do, uh, I need to make all these changes, right? This is not good. So a lot of, lot of code changes, right? This is not good. Nobody is going to do that in the real time application, right? So that's why we're going to use the interface uh, reference just after some time, right? But first of all, let's stick into this. First of all, I want you to configure this thing, okay, in the XML file. So can you guide me to do that? So in the bins.xml file, right now I do have a new bin I need to create. So let me do a control C uh, on this and uh, okay so right now let's say let me change the math to science okay science state object value and the class for this is going to be uh, right click on science science state class click on copy qualified name come back to bins.xml file and remove this thing and update with the uh, latest copied stuff so command v and I got my science state fully qualified path name. So right now my student class, this is my student class uh, bean. Okay, this is my student class object here I'm creating. And for this object, right now, what is my property name? My property name is uh, this shit. I'm going to command C it over here. I'm going to come over here to the bins.xml file, I'm going to do a command V over here. And I'm going to remove this reference and I'm going to update this reference with the science state, uh, you know, reference over here. So ref equal to this. So this is holding the actual science state object, right? So over here you can see with this particular with this particular ID science state object value, I'm configuring the science state class, right? As simple as that. So right now if I do a command S, so this is actually not required right now, but let it be over here, right? Exactly. If I go to a, go to my client.java class right now, because I want to run this uh, application, I want to see this, that this particular method is getting called or not. This particular method is, that if this particular method is going to work fine, then I can assume that, okay, my cheat time sheet object is getting injected so that this particular method is working fine, right? So what I can do right now, I can go to my client.java class and inside this uh, application, uh, context my bin file name is correct bins.xml and this is also bins.xml and over here I have done a simple sysout just to make sure that my bins.xml file is getting loaded perfectly just to log something over here and after that here I'm calling the get bin method passing the ID so what is the ID for my student stu right so that's why I've written stu over here and I also want the object for student.class, right? So this is what I've configured over here. This is going to give me back my student object. I got my student object and I want to call the student class cheating method, right? So once I got the student object over here, over that particular object, I'm calling the cheating method. Now what this cheating method is going to do, this cheating method is going to tag me to the science cheat method. So if I do command, click over here, here I am, uh, I'm inside the science jet class right so this particular method is going to be get call and this particular line will be get printed into the console so let me first do that so if i go to client.java class and if i do uh, run this particular program here you can see my container is getting started my bins.xml file is getting loaded because you know this what uh, the log that i printed over there and my science setting is getting started 
right so this is simple dependency injection concept right so we are good in this right so right now we can go ahead and we can do something over here in the student class so that we will not do the code changes again and again based on our implementation right so my student class right now need to support for any kind of cheat he can take any kind of cheat right so he can take history cheat science cheat whatever but he don't need to change this class right we need to do something over here and we are going to take the help of interface because interface help us to achieve the loose coupling in java right so let's do it right now, now we are going to uh, do something over here in, to this particular student class so that right now a student class this particular reference is going to support any kind of implementation and for that rather taking a implementation reference we are going to take an interface reference and that's what we are going to do next why don't i create an interface something like a uh, cheat okay this will be good right so think like i have an interface called cheat so this is a new trick to create an interface i hope you already know it so cheat so there is nothing present something called cheat right so it is eclipse is saying me create a class called cheat create an interface called cheat i said hey create an interface here called cheat and here i'm going to say is a the modifier is public and uh, there you go everything looks good hit finish and i got a cheat interface oh cool right so i know that any kind of cheating the student is going to take or i am going to take there should be a functionality that that i should have a method called cheat okay that cheat method uh, if it is if it is math class cheat method it should do math cheating it is science class cheat method it should do science cheating but one thing is common there should be a cheat method present right so here what i what i'm going to do i'm going to create a method called public void cheat right and this is the abstract method method obviously right so right now what i'm going to do all my implementation class that i do have like math cheat or science cheat i'll go to the math cheat i'll do implements uh, cheat interface right implements cheat interface there you go so right now it is going to give me an error anybody guess why you are very right because in the interface whatever cheat is our interface right so in the inside the interface whatever the methods that we have if our class is implementing that interface it should override this cheat method right so i'll go to my math cheat.java class it implements the cheat interface so what i'll do i will uh, uh, change this method math cheat name to cheat there you go the error is gone yeah and i'll do the same thing with the science cheat i'll change uh, first of all i will implement my science cheat class is also implements the cheat interface there you go and right now straight away it is going to give me an error because it is saying me add unimplemented method so what i'm going to do i'm going to change this method name to cheat there we go and this is done all right okay so now that looks good okay so we have two different classes right now which is implementing our base interface right so that we can make sure that this cheat has the interface called uh, sorry this cheat has the method called cheat means all the classes which is going to implement this cheat interface they must need to provide the cheat method so right now that's what i say the actual programming so right now if i come to student.java right now i'm going to remove this thing okay i'm going to remove this thing for for a moment and right now what i'm going to do i'm going to remove this setter method right now and just to confirm that this cheat is right now the interface variable this cheat is the interface if i do command click this is an interface right so right now what i'm going to do i'm going to generate the setters uh, setter method for that there you go i do have a, a setter method generated by the eclipse i'll do command a control shift f so that my code will look good right now and right now simply inside this particular method called cheating what i'll do i'll do this i'll do cheat okay cheat is my interface reference and i'll call the interface cheat method right so right now this which cheat method is going to be executed right 
that is going to be decided in the runtime based on the object that we are passing. If we are passing, so right now this cheat method is present where it is present inside the uh, interface, right? So right now, if I will do the open implementation, then it is saying, okay, there are two implementation present, match it, and this is for match it implementation. If I'll go back here, and if I'll do a control click over here, if I see open implementation, again, it is saying, okay, there is two different implementation is available for the cheat class. One is match it implementation, one is science state implementation. If I'll click the science state, it will take me to the, to, to the science state class, and there is a cheat method over here as well. So based on our requirement, okay, based on what cheat we are going to do right now, based on our requirement, the compiler, or sorry, the JVM is going to decide, okay, this one, this is the one method to run. Uh, run. I, do I need to run the cheat method of science cheat class, or do I need to run the cheat method of match cheat class, or do I need to run the cheat method of any other cheat class? That is going to be decided by the JVM based on the runtime object that we are passing and we're going to see right now how we're going to do that right so right now that's that's looking good if i if i'll come back to my student java class right now so there we go so right now everything looks good right now in my student class i don't need to touch it anymore uh, you know from this particular point and i'm going to show you that how so first of all let's say i'm going to go to my bean.xml file so where is it Okay, so right now you tell me, I do have two different cheat object available, right? There are two different cheat object available over here, two different bean that I have already configured. One bean is for the match cheat, one bean is for the science cheat, right? So in my student class, what you need, okay? What exam you have? So let's say this, uh, let's say tomorrow I have the math exam. Okay, no problem. I'll come to my bean.xml file. I'll say the property name is cheat, obviously. This, this name will be always going to be cheat only. Right now, what is the, sorry, bin.xml file. So right now, what is the value that we, you are going to inject? You are going to inject the match cheat class value or you are going to inject the science state class object. Which object you are going to inject? Let's say I'm going to inject the science state object. Control C it, control V it over here to a control S, okay? Come back to the client.java class. I'm not going to, I haven't changed anything over here. I'm going to run it. So which class method will be get called science cheating right because this is something just like this right so c is very simple in the bin.xml file the runtime object is passing is science state uh, science state object value that means this is belongs to this uh, selenium express dot di dot science state class the class name is science state it is a science state object so in the runtime you are passing the science state object over here here the cheat has the science state object so it is setting something like this, cheat, cheat equal to new science cheat. Okay, so right now, which particular method will be get called simple interface concept, right? The object is of science cheat class should call the science cheat method, right? This is a science cheat method, right? This is just to make you understand. So let me remove it. Okay, if that will be match it, it will call the match it, uh, uh, match it method, right? So let's do that. If I'll go to bin.xml file, let's say, my science cheat exam is done. Tomorrow I have the math exam. So what I'll do, I'll take this match it value. I'll just do inject it over here in the ref. That's it. If I'll go to the client.java right now, if I run this, the math cheat is going to be get started. You can see in the screen, math cheating started, right? So right now our student uh, is able to, uh, you know, take any kind of cheat. This cheat is a pocket, right? Variables are pocket. We are going to store some value in the pocket. If I do have, I don't have a pocket here. Right now, we have created a pocket for our student, and this pocket is right now support any kind of cheat. He can take any kind of cheat right now. Let's say I have an another class. He has an another exam tomorrow, or day after tomorrow, or two days after. Let's say he'll have the Java exam. Let's say Java cheat. So Java exam means we need to prepare the Java cheat, right? Uh, we are very good in that. Most probably not. You are very good, I know. <laughs> you never do cheating. I also know that. <laughs> I'll click finish here. So, okay. So in the Java cheat, it's also going to implement our cheat interface. So implement cheat. And again, I have to implement the unimplemented methods. 
and right now this cheat method is going to let's say sys out sys out and let's say java cheating started right so let's say tomorrow my student had the java exam so i don't need to do anything my pocket is going to support it i just need to configure it outside of the class right I am not going to touch this particular class. I am not going to change the source code. Spring is best because we don't need to change the source code. We are just going to change the configuration. So I'll come to the configuration class and uh, sorry, configuration file. And here I'm going to create a another bean because I need a, a Java cheat, right? So I'm going to say instead of science, I'm going to say Java cheat object value and the class that i've created right now the class name is java cheat probably okay and there you go and inside my student uh, bean i so there is a dependency called cheat and this cheat i want the java cheat object over here so what i'm going to do i'm going to go to my bin.xml file and i'm going to take the java cheat object value and i'm going to put it over here inside the ref there you go right simple done Right now, our object will be injected by Spring. Spring will do the dependency injection for us. So if I'll go to my uh, Java, sorry, client or Java class again, and if, I, if I'm going to run this particular application, and you can see Java cheating is getting started, right? You understand the concept? Java, uh, you, you can see the result over here, right? Java, Java cheating is getting started. We are not harming our source code because our class is right now uh, loosely coupled, right? This is this is this is what we are doing loose coupling here because we are taking the interface reference. We are not taking the implementation class reference. We are taking the uh, interface reference. Is that clear? I think it is very clear, right? So this is how Spring is helping us uh, to do the dependency injection in uh, in Java. So this approach guys it is very important you have to understand it i think you have already got it i'm right now going to give you an assignment don't hate me but i'm going to give you an assignment you need to do what just a similar structure something like this and you need to create a uh, you need to create your assignment sorry you have to do your assignment you need to show me that assignment you have to send me that particular assignment if you're following my course so if you are done with this guys the rest of the course is going to be nothing for you right you are done with dependency injection means you are done with one of the most important concept in spring and they are going to ask uh, this type of questions very uh, very i mean so many times you are going to get this type of questions in your inter interview right it will be very simple if you have if you have practiced it right so I, I really tell you one thing that you have to practice right just don't uh, watch videos also do the practice i'm not saying that was my videos I, i'm saying watch anybody's videos if you are learning something implement it right write that code in the same day and programming is going to be very simple for you guys okay good speech right <laughs> so <laughs> so what i'm going to do right now this is how the loose coupling need to be happen and right now i'm going to give you an assignment. this is the assignment time right now you understand this i'm going to give you a similar program like this you just need to do that right and once you do that guys life will be very easy because we are going to talk about auto wearing annotations and all the stops and we are going to go like a bullet right because once you understand these things those concepts will be super 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 easy okay so first of all okay so what what is the assignment okay so think about a cellular company let's talk about airtel right so if you are a airtel customer or any kind of sim if you are using then you, you might be getting uh, various services. Suppose you will call, hey, I need the data service. I need to, uh, I need to use internet, right? So they will activate the data service for you, right? If you say, hey, I don't want the data service. I want the missed call alert service. Then they'll activate the missed call alert service for you. And if you'll say, hey, I want the hello tune service. I don't want the missed call alert service. Then they'll activate the missed call, uh, sorry, the hello tune service for you. So there will be different services that our Airtel is providing to us, right? Not I'll not say our Airtel, okay? <laughs> so I am not advertising Airtel over here, okay? And I I haven't get a single penny from them as well, right? Otherwise I'll get start getting comments, okay? You you are getting money from them, <laughs> not at all. I'm not getting a single penny from anybody. So okay. So now let's say 
I I do have a class called uh, I, I do have an interface called service okay and uh, in that service I do have a method called service as well and I do have different implementation classes just like uh, uh, missed call alert service class uh, hello tune service class then data service uh, service class right so I do have different uh, kind of service classes over here and all these service classes are implementing my base interface which is service interface and this service interface has a common method called service and that service method is being operated by every classes that I do have over here like missed call alert or like um, uh, hello tune or like the data service right very simple you got a clear picture so right now your job will be create a class called Airtel okay uh, take the interface variable uh, over there as the reference and do a setter injection or constructor injection as of uh, I mean um, whatever you are comfortable with then create a method called call service or activate service and call uh, you know the service method of any of the service method of the implementation now you need to configure everything for this Airtel class in the bins.xml file right you need to create different bins for the different services and you need to configure those bins with the Airtel bin and so that uh, if I want to if I want to use the hello tune service it should inject the hello tune service object if I want to use the uh, let's say the data service it should inject the data service object right so that I'll get the internet so can you please do uh, a program like this and can and can send that particular file to you know selenium express at the rate gmail.com or or just do it okay and send it to me i'll definitely going to check it out and i'm definitely going to reply you back right so do this assignment for you i'll just uh, you know try to put the pictures um, of all these things that i've discussed uh, you know over here over here as well so that uh, you know you can uh, get a clear picture that whatever the requirement that i'm giving it to you and once you are done guys seriously we are we are not going to stop uh, after after this thing we are going to you know run like a tracing bullet and we are going to catch everything very very quick okay so do this configuration in the bins.xml file try to do it the property uh, property tag that try to use the constructor arc tag uh, i haven't covered the constructor arc tag for the uh, uh, injecting the object type value but I have covered the constructor arc tag for injecting the literal value or for the primitive type value injection, right? You can get the concept from there and try to do all these things, right? Okay, so this is a simple requirement that I want to give it to you. So you can do, you know, setter injection or you can do a constructor injection, whatever you want, but the requirement need to be fulfilled. Okay, so do it, zip this file, send it to my email ID, okay? And you are ready for the next tutorial where we are going to learn the auto wearing concept of spring and then we'll be jump into the annotation kind of stuff right so a whole lot of exciting stuff are coming up i hope you guys are loving it i should be saying it i don't know okay you let me know you are loving it or not or i'm just boring you guys okay just let me know so that i can also improve so that's it guys so do let me know what do you think about this tutorial if you like this tutorial do subscribe don't forget to do that so that uh, you know we can make our family big as soon as we can and we'll get a, a good community over here to talk about coding and all those stuff right so do subscribe do like and let me know if you don't like this tutorial and tell me that okay what is wrong with this particular video okay what you want to see as the improvement all right so that's it thank you very much for watching this and have a nice day bye bye